Joining me at the desk is the Shadow Science and Arts Minister, Paul Fletcher. Minister, or Shadow Minister, good morning. Um, you're the voice trying to understand it. It's, <laughs> uh, yeah, like you guys jumped on that very quickly. Yeah, Tim, well, look, the, 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 the question for Australians uh, when they come to vote in October is, um, does this mechanism that is proposed to be entrenched in the Constitution by the Albanese Labor government make sense as far as you're concerned. It's very clear that Australians feel enormous goodwill towards Indigenous Australians. That's very clear to me from my constituents. It's very clear to me there's very wide support for constitutional recognition. But the question is whether the mechanism that the Labor government is proposing for The Voice makes sense. And Australians want to know what the details are. How many people will be on this body? How will they be chosen? What issues will it be empowered to make representation? about what will be the consequences if a minister makes a decision and is found not to have adequately consulted mm. with the voice. So these are all the issues of detail the Australian people want to know about and I think um, that'll be uh, top of mind for people when it, come, when it comes to them casting a vote. And that's the connection, isn't it? Because I think, you know, you're 100% right. Most people want to see some of those statistics, all, all of those of statistics change, those early mortality mm -hmm. statistics and everything else. But they want to know how this is going to help that. And somewhere in the middle, there hasn't been enough education for people to understand. And many people are struggling, so they're thinking, well, this is priority 600 for me to even try and want to read and find out exactly what it is. Look, I think that's right. And I think, unfortunately, Prime Minister Albanese is making, has made a deliberate decision to try and give as little information as possible, trying to get people to vote on the vibe. That is, uh, I think, not necessarily making sense to a lot of Australians. And the other thing that he's done is he's deliberately turned away from what had been a very bipartisan approach on this for several terms in Parliament. We had parliamentary committees co-chaired by a Liberal MP, Julian Lisa, and a Labor Senator, Pat Dodson. That bipartisan approach had gone back as far as um, the, the Rudd Gillard Rudd government and, and a bipartisan approach with the then Tony Abbott led opposition. Mr Albanese chose to go off in a direction of his own. He, he uh, politicised this and that's I think very, very unfortunate. I think there's no doubt Australians have an appetite mm. for a national unifying moment as we saw in 1967 on the question of recognition of Indigenous Australians but Mr Albanese has mishandled this. And so that, I think, will be the question in the minds of the Australian people when it comes to voting uh, on October 14. Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong are doing a better job with China than Scott Morrison and Peter Dutton, aren't they? Well, I'm not sure I'd agree with that proposition at all, actually. Really? The, the, you know, the fundamentals uh, between Australia and China are, and this was very clear under the Morrison government, mm. uh, we, want, uh, mutual, we want mutual respect. Um, obviously, uh, we regarded the trade relationship as enormously important, uh, but at the same time, there will be issues of difference between our two countries, including human rights issues, the treatment, for example, of uh, an Australian journalist uh, who's been incarcerated uh, and other such matters. So um, going forward, uh, stating those differences where they exist in a uh, firm but mutually respectful way was a, a principle the Morrison government uh, pursued and it's interesting on the fundamentals, if you look, for example, at the support for AUKUS, uh, a very significant achievement of the Morrison government. Mm. This government, uh, to their credit, has maintained support for AUKUS. Um, we want a peaceful Indo-Pacific in which uh, all countries respect each other and respect the international rule of law. I think there will be a school, and we haven't got time to, there will be a school of thought that say that they thought that Morrison and Dutton were a little bit bolshy with that relationship. But let's move on. Um, to these IR laws, because we just had a good conversation with the Chief Executive Officer of the Business Council. Small business is struggling. Aspiration is hard to find because people have got red tape, they've got challenges ahead of them, whether it becomes, whether it's supply, whether it's staffing. This is just another layer on top. It's a problem. It's a huge problem. Small business is the very heart of Australia's economy. Uh, many, many Australians work in small businesses. Many Australians uh, take the step to establish a small business, but it's hard. It requires a sustained effort. And all too often, when sales are down and uh, a business is going through a difficult period, it's the business owner who reduces what they take out of the business so they can make sure they're 
still paying the salaries and super of their employees. Mm. Now, what Labor has already done through the draconian industrial relations changes it's already made in legislation passed last year is they've made it harder for small business. But now these new laws that Mr Burke is trying to put through, the industrial relations minister, would make it harder still. For example, they're proposing to give union officials a right of entry into businesses around the country if they merely have a suspicion that there's been underpayment of a worker. So you can be a small business person in your shop or indeed if you're working from home or you own a farm, you could get a knock on the door from a thug from the CFMEU, a convicted criminal, and we know that there are CFMEU officials who have uh, been convicted on a range of charges. Uh, they could knock on the door saying, we've got a suspicion, we demand to see the records of what you've paid your employees, personal or private information, sensitive information, but they would have the right to require that under this law that Mr Albanese and uh, Mr Burke are putting before the parliament. Now, the Senate last week, uh, thankfully, supported a Senate inquiry. So that'll uh, allow the details of what's contained in this 278 pages of legislation to be examined, and that'll allow Australians, including small business mm. people, to better understand what's pr proposed here. But yeah, in short, it's terrible for our nation. We know our economy is slowing. We know productivity is a huge problem. Productivity is going backwards under this government. And yet a whole series of changes that this government is making, including a sustained attack on the digital economy under this legislation as well, really bad news for Australia. Uh, this government is taking us in the wrong direction on this as on so many other issues.